Welcome to series four in lockdown of Vaughan Socks and I'm going to be talking uh, in this series about all the cars that I've uh, had um, and uh, I'm wearing, um, you know, the, the, the proper gear for it. This is a sort of like mechanics gear so that we get into the mood of it. Let's start with something. <laughs> It's the, that's the model, a 1938 Austin 10, and that was the car I learnt to drive on, and in fact I've got one now. I, I bought it a few years ago because I wanted to rediscover my youth, and uh, it was called, when it's advertised, Britain's Dependable Car. <laughs> and my brother uh, being driven to Chapel St Leonard's uh, outside Skegness by Uncle Charles in his Austin 7 which wasn't quite as good as an Austin 10 and there he is you see and I'd said to him why don't you get a better car Charles Uncle Charles because it was very slow and he said he pulled into the side of the road and he said get out so I, out I got and uh, and uh, I had to walk, and uh, anyway, he turned around and came back and collected us about 12, 11 at the time, something like that. But, but the car that you learn on is uh, something you never forget. And uh, I learned on this one, and uh, I still getting into the model of this car uh, 55 years later, I, I still knew how to uh, start it up and uh, in fact put it into. Second gear, you always have to start it in second gear, first gear was too low and, uh, and, and to double the clutch and to drive it along and all the rest of it, you see. But uh, um, I like driving it into Sandwich, uh, not far from here, for, there's an old petrol station there, they still have a sort of a pump service, believe it or not. You know, Sandwich is like going back to the 1950s, maybe not the 1930s, but certainly the 1950s. And uh, I always have this uh, um, conversation with the uh, the pump attendant guy, Paddy, and I say, uh, and he says, uh, how many litres do you want? And I say, it doesn't take litres, it takes gallons. And he says, what do you mean it doesn't take litres? I said, well, it doesn't understand, it wasn't built for litres, it was built for gallons, so I'll have three gallons, please. And of course, there's other people waiting in the queue and we play this show out every time, and it's great fun to, to go and do that. But the good thing about these cars is they're very strongly made built like a brick shit house and um, uh, had very strong steel and they were better built than, than uh, in the time than the Morrises and the Fords. Four wheels and a board make a Ford they used to say and, and Vauxhall and so on and, that. and Morris were probably near as, nearly as good uh, but uh, they were very very strongly built cars and uh, my father had one you see before the war and, uh, and he, after the war he had one and uh, I remember going in it uh, and that was the car later on. He got a later model then, the 938, but it was a 934 one. Uh, but uh, um, he, uh, he uh, used to uh, swear by this car. He, he was uh, so, well, so strong that once he drove it through the wooden garage and the brakes didn't work, which offered the case, and he drove it, and of course he drove out the other end, much to our delight, and the whole bloody garage came down like something out of a Keystone Cops it was. Um, but just before the war, apparently, he, uh, he thought he'd change it and... Uh, he thought uh, um, uh, he, he liked a car called an Opal, but as it was 1939, he, he thought better of it. But anyway, um, the thing about these cars is that they didn't, um, 
the, the brakes on them aren't very good and you have to watch that nowadays I mean driving around the country lanes around here uh, I can't stop as quickly as modern cars of course modern you're driving a modern car people drive faster around corners because they know they can stop in a sixpence but this thing can't so you've got to be very gingerly going around and making sure you didn't drive into anything you see and in fact uh, I remember when I was, I was, I was a kid uh, there are two occasions when we had got into trouble uh, with the brakes not working and probably more but I remember once we were going over Nottingham uh, um, Trent Bridge and my mother was driving and uh, um, to slow it down she says you it will stop here and you can have the view from Trent Bridge which is a great interesting view and uh, we, we, so but to stop the car what we had to do what she had to do uh, was to slide the the wheels down the down the side of the uh, of the curb and then slowly it would slow down you see and a policeman saw this anyway he came over and he said he looked at the tyres of all the campus coming through that and uh, he said you can't do this that you know you can't drive off like that and and, and uh, try and stop a car in that particular way even though you've managed to stop it and uh, anyway she with her usual charm and flattery and all the rest of it for men uh, the men loved her uh, she got away with that but another one she got away with, we were driving uh, down one of the few hills in Lincolnshire, we were driving to, to Chapels of Venice to Skegness. Uh, this time my mother was driving the Austin 10. And uh, we were coming down this hill, there's a T-junction at the bottom, I must have been about 10 or something like that. And, uh, um, and I thought, she, she said, I'm not going to stop, I can't stop. And of course, coming down in the opposite direction like that was an Austin 7, a bit like Uncle Charles's. And ours was an Austin 10. And you could see the whole thing in slow motion, it's in the 1950s, and it just went like this, and it just slowly tipped it over like this, oh, all like that. And then we stopped, and nobody was hurt, I don't think, but when we walked over to the car, it was right outside of the pub opposite, and um, we, uh, we went um, and opened the doors, I remember, and there's an elderly couple in there, all shaking, oh, what's happened, what's happened, what's happened? Anyway, the people came out of the pub, some guys came out of the pub, and we managed to push, they pushed this little Austin 7 upright and they got this old couple out of the, out of the pub and then we took them into the pub, I had to wait outside and they gave them a couple of brandies I think and then they drove off and nobody sued anybody at all about it. But the other thing that happened about those old cars was that um, the, they could easily overheat, I mean old cars could and we used to have to stop every time we were going to the seaside you know, to cool down, usually at pubs where my parents could cool down as well and we had to sit outside with a bottle of pop and that. But uh, um, once I remember being driven uh, through Newark early in the morning by my father to the bus, so I had to go to school, and uh, um, uh, it was uh, we, we came to one of Newark's only traffic lights in those days, and uh, it, there was a big company outside just outside Newark there called Ransom Mars Ball Bearing Factory. In fact, Uncle Charles worked there in the drawing office. And I thought that would be my aspiration, you see. And uh, um, it might be quite a nice job. But anyway, um, we came up with these traffic lights and he slowed it down, you see. And it was a cold day, you see. And uh, um, he'd, the radiator on the, on the outside of his car, uh, it, he'd lost the cap. Somebody had stolen the radiator cap because the radiator was on the outside. And he kind of got, put a big cork in it, a big cork like that. So all these people from Ransom and Mars factory, in those days all the factory workers came on bicycles. So there's a great flock of bicycles around us at the traffic lights as we came up, going forward. And just as he was about to move off and the lights changed, he put his foot on the accelerator and the court went whoosh! And all this scalding hot water just got like a geezer just came out. Wow, like that, you see, all over. And these, these cyclists go, oh, for fuck's sake, what are you doing? And, and he said, sorry. And he drove off, and all these cyclists after us saying, "You fucking wrong, get you, you bastard!" <laughs> it's funny now, but it probably wasn't very funny at the time. Anyway, let's. <laughs> It was terrible, mainly because my mother bullied him into having it because it had belonged to his sister-in-law and her husband had died, sadly, and uh, 
he had this standard eight. So uh, I was sort of like given the use of the of, of, of the of the car I learnt to drive on this one. And uh, um, I, once uh, I had a job working in a in, in a farm in, on a farm in uh, about 962 it was, and uh, on another little hill, uh, well the, on the A1 near Grantham, I tried it out for speed. Uh, the top speed of these cars is 60 miles an hour. But I managed to get it to 71 down a hill, uh, Gonaby Hill near near um, near um, uh, Grantham, and do you know it's the most frightening speed I've ever been. I've been 160. I've driven in a GTI and uh, in our autobahn, but uh, um, but this was 71 miles an hour, and this was absolutely terrifying. And I won't do it again. Um, but um, the, what happened to the car? Well. It, uh, um, it was eventually sold to a, 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 a woman who uh, was the matron of an old people's home called Care Homes nowadays, Red Cross Home, where my mother worked for a time. And in fact, she became the matron eventually. And her name was Mrs. Treadway, and my father called her Mrs. Re Treadway because she used to drive, she sold the car to her. And she lived, in, she, her family were in London, but it was 126 miles north of uh, Newark, is north of London. And she would go down every weekend in this little car and drive down flat out on the A1 all the way and all the way back on Sunday night and it, it kept this up and the car actually managed to keep this up for a month or two before it blew up somewhere near St Neots I think in, 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 in Huntingdonshire and, uh, um, and my mother was really cross about this because it was a nice little car and she said uh, you know what it's like he said Mrs Treadway she, she dr drove like a mad woman all, all, all down to London and back again. Well, she said, of course the car would blow up. It was like making an old man run fast. Who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Pitt?